Hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom Be Pal Picks Edition. See my hands going all crazy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to get right into picks here right away. Uh, I'm not doing the quick pick thing anymore. We're going to go a little different here. We're going to go, I'm going to do the picks in a little bit of in depthness. And then we're going to talk about the games from last night. One in particular that I want to talk about. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. And as soon as somebody says that, you know what they're going to do, right? I'm going to tell you about a conspiracy possibility. Uh, we'll be looking at that in the games then. Look at that. I still got this on my head. What the heck am I doing? I don't need that. Not at all. I just look foolish. Less, more foolish than normal. Um, okay. Yeah. We did really well. Uh, let's go right. First of all, go. If, if um, We lubed up the uh, Pearls of Wisdom uh, Pearl copy. So we can send you a Pearls of Wisdom necklace. I got a letter from Leanna Hope from uh, somewhere in California. I can't remember. Anyways, asking if she can purchase her own Pearls of Wisdom necklace because she has a uh, baby shower to go to. And I was like, yes, you can. You just go to any thing where things are sold and then ask for their pearls, pearl necklace section. And... Uh, then uh, they'll send you there and you go purchase one there. So thanks for the letter, by the way. Love your letters. Send them. Guido goes down and gets them in the mail room every morning. And they uh, we dance. We do pearl dance like that. Around the table, the letter table. And then we read the letters. So you do that. Okay, let's look at our picks. All right. Columbus versus Florida. Um... I gotta take Florida Panthers here. Columbus Blue Jackets just look like poop. I they they pretty much mailed it in now. Uh, they, they they see the writing on the wall. They're not going to make the playoffs. I don't know if Lion is going to be back with the team. Uh, it doesn't look like it, and I think that might be part of the problem. Yeah. There's just been so much change with this team, and uh, uh, a lot of drama. It'd be interesting to see if Tortorella's back. I don't know. It's really difficult to say. But Florida should be able to capitalize on all of these issues pretty well. Uh, it looks like uh, Bobrovsky will be in net. And hopefully Corpusalo. If so, I'm looking at the over here. Uh, Tampa Bay versus Carolina. I'm taking Carolina and Tampa Bay can kiss my butt. I'm tired of their team. I'm tired of them. They look terrible. They look absolutely terrible. Taking Carolina on the money line for this juice against this Tampa Bay team that's losing to Detroit and everybody else. And like that, they don't even look angry about it. It's uh, it's getting close to playoff time, Mr. Tampa Bay. You know, you, uh, Perlos helps the spank and it's probably near, uh, right, right around the corner for you. You're going to need it. I think, because if they're playing like this come playoff time, they ain't going nowhere. I'm taking Carolina. Uh, doesn't matter who's met. Uh, Detroit versus Dallas. I'm hoping they put Bernier in here. If they if Detroit puts Bernier in, I'm gonna go Detroit puck line. I just like the juice on this. This they're they're the uh, the odds makers are to completely what the heck am I doing spread completely missing out on the fact that Detroit is playing a lot better in the second half and uh, 177 you can get it on Bodog or intro tops by the way you should get all this uh, uh, these apps 180 at pinnacle for a puck line on, against Dallas I like it I like the way Dallas is playing uh, if Ottinger and Bernier are in, this will be a tight game, I think. And I think it'll be under. So under five and a half. Total. Yeah, under five and a half on that. Oh. Lost for a second. Okay. 
Um, this is a back to back, by the way. It was Columbus and Florida. It was the beginning of a back to back. Chicago versus Nashville. Um, I'm leaning Chicago here. Very tight game. A uh, thing that scares me about Chicago is they can get outplayed and still win because they have so many high percentage scorers. Uh, to bring at and Kurashev and Kane in a lot of ways. Um, they just have guys that can score from anywhere. Quite a few of them. Even Pia Suter has been doing that a lot. Um, I'm probably missing some. I know I am. I know they have more guys like that. Kurashev, Kurashev. Anyways, it doesn't matter. That's what scares me about him. And with Duchesne back for Nashville, I don't think that really improves them all that much. In fact, it might even be a minus. The guy seems to have an attitude problem. And O'Brien on Sirius Radio actually brought this up one time. He played for them in Colorado. And he nicely said on the broadcast that he had to talk to them a couple times about being such a negative Nancy. So, there you go. Um, anyways, I'm going to go Nashville money line and probably the under if it's lengthening in sorrows. Arizona and Minnesota. I have a funny feeling about Arizona here, and I don't know why. Maybe just the late night that I'm at right now. <laughs> but for some reason, I like Arizona here. One of the reasons is Kemper is in there. Um, I can't really explain it. You know this sometimes where you just don't know? It's a gut. Now, we'll talk about guts here and what happened uh, last night on the 18th, 17th, 18th, 19th is tomorrow. Uh, but I'm going to go gut. Oh, my gut says Arizona. Maybe puck line at 155. Pia Wimp. Puck line. I just have a feeling they're going to play well there. Calgary versus Ottawa. Ottawa just flew from the east two days ago. Difficult one to cap. I think Calgary is going to likely win. But at 1.5, I don't like giving up that kind of juice on that. But you got to go with who you think is going to win. I think it's going to be Calgary here. Uh, Ottawa is strong. They'll probably keep it close. Man, you might want to PL that. Probably getting a much better 174 for a could-be tired Ottawa team. Calgary looks like they're playing for each other now, though. Tough one. Very tough game. Calgary, ML, and under six. Montreal versus Edmonton. I'm going to take Edmonton. Montreal is at the same situation as Ottawa, but they're also on four games in six nights. I'm going Edmonton, Moneyline, and under six. Uh, Vegas versus San Jose. I'm taking uh, Vegas on the – Vegas in regulation, even though it's a back-to-back. -back, I don't – really like taking a team on a back-to-back -back like this against a team that's not on a back-to-back. -back. But Vegas is rocking. San Jose looks like they are just don't even know what's going on. They're like in the season now. Really, that's what it looks like to me. So they're done. Um, Vegas in regulation. And I would say over – to. Their defense is so bad. So bad. You're going to have to have like several, um, probably three or four sessions, I would say, over golf season at uh, Perlow's House of Spank in San Jose. So I'm going to send, I'll be sending Melissa and, uh, and Hernandez, both Perlocopters, over to pick you up and send you over there because you are going to need to big time. Terrible, terrible season for San Jose Sharks. Okay, for you that that's there's your picks. Off you go now. If you don't, if you but if you want to hear the the uh, the scoop on the game, stick around because we're going to talk about the games for tomorrow right now. Our games from last night right now and how we did.
Um, I thought we were going to do way better than we did. Bruins, this was a great one. We had Bruins for large pearls in regulation. Uh, we also had the under, though. And that, see, what I do, if you're a follower online on Patreon, uh, you can, and you can get that by just going in the description, hit the link. I'll give you a give you a couple weeks right now for free and uh, you can check it out if you like it if you don't like it get out uh it won't cost you a dime and you can get out whenever you want by the way if you do like to stick around then all of a sudden you don't like it anymore you can leave anytime you're not locked in but if you take my picks all my picks every day that i make you will end up up because if another guy like uh professor or uh stats professor professor mj he is an actual professor and uh he, he does, he's another one that does that over time you will make money it's like an investment so what i do is i would have taken the bruins here and i took the under not because i really thought it would be an under necessarily but if the capitals would have won this it would have been under so basically i'm hedging my bet that if i do lose i'm not going to lose as much now, why did I say that it would be under if the Capitals won? Because it would have meant that Vanacek played really well. And it's not very likely that the Capitals are going to score more than three against Tuka Rask in this spot. So, they scored three. If Vanacek plays really well, they might win 3-2. And I'm hedging my bet. And now I lost on the bigger bet of the Bruins, but I got some back on the smaller bet on the under. See what I mean? So that's what I do there. I should have did that here, but I went for, I just had a, it was a really good spot for the Devils, although I wasn't very confident about it, but the uh, the Rangers would have had Gorgiev in. You've got a huge revenge factor. This is the Devils' last chance to take a win from the Rangers. It would have been four or five in a row they lost to the Rangers. I figured they're going to play super hard in this one and possibly take it. So I took the Devils for the, it was really good uh, odds to, uh, in, a, in a really good spot. But for a small, I didn't put much on it. And we lost it. And we also had the under. And the under, don't ask me. Sometimes you just do stupid stuff. It was a stupid bet. Stupid bet. Very unlikely it was going to be under. I don't know what I was thinking. Because Blackwood was in net. I don't know. It was a bad move. It was a bad bet. But anyways, sometimes we do that, right? I uh, The Devils came back, made it look good for a bit, but it didn't work out. Here's one where it ticks me off where I had Sabres in my gut, but I couldn't freaking let go. I couldn't pull the trigger on it. Especially when Tarkovsky was put in net again. I really, I talked about it in uh, the analysis I do for my Patreon. I give you an analysis on every game, every morning. I sit there and I print them all out. And uh, it's just, uh, it's not really a statistical. It just gives my reasons for why I'm making the bet. And I said, if Tokarski was in, I like the under. But I bet the under, but it was six, so it was a push. I ended up going Penguins Large Pearls. Though. I couldn't get it. I just thought I couldn't get the Sabres out, out of me. So I ended up losing three units on that. Golden Knights versus the Ducks. We had Golden Knights for big, big, big. I liked them a lot. Uh, so it made back some of our money on that one. Um, we also had the under, and that was basically based on the idea that Gibson would stop pucks like crazy. Uh, Ken, he can do that, and they could actually win. So on the 20% chance that the Ducks win this game, I hedge my bet on the under because if they win, it's probably almost assuredly going to be under. But we got the over in a big way. Islanders, I got greedy and I took the inner egg on this one. Freaking, I don't. I do know why I did. The Islanders should have won this game much more better than nobody deserved to win this game. This was bad on both teams did not play good. It was boring to watch. Uh, it was it was a bad game to watch. It really was. And I was surprised. 
I thought the Islanders would come out gunning here, but they look terrible. Ever since they made that trade for Pal Palmieri and Zajac, they haven't looked right. And I should have thought about that, maybe, when I made the bet. Because I also took the over. I lost four units on this. Four pearls. And then this one killed me. No, it didn't. It didn't kill me, actually. It broke even on it. But this is the one I was talking about. Okay. Miller, I'm sure you know from Vancouver, center of the Vancouver Canucks, comes out and says that they're not ready. He doesn't think the league should make him play in so many words. He said he'll do it because he gets paid to do it, and that's what he's supposed to do. But he doesn't think they should force them to play. And uh, I'm sure it took the league aback. They didn't go crazy about it. They kept pretty hush-hush about it. However, they obviously need to get all these. They, they feel they strongly need to get all these games in. Uh, they had guys that were sick. They weren't ready. It didn't seem fair. Is it possible he went? they went to the Maple Leafs Brass organization, they went to the Canucks organization, and said, look, just play the game. I talked to the, the Leafs Brass, and they kind of we kind of worked out something here where they tell the players, you know, take it easy on the Canucks. And take it easy on Vancouver. We need to get all these games in. You're going to get – it's to do with your own salaries. It's to do with the owner's money. It's to do with sponsors, especially sponsors. You have to think, man. Sponsors paid money to be in the commercials in these games that they're canceling. And they all kind of went, okay, you know, we won't we'll make it, you know, definitely won't blow them out. And they just so happens that Maple Leafs get one point, even though they don't, you know, they're in pretty good shape. They don't need to win all these games. Canucks are probably not going to make the playoffs. And it just kind of smooths things over as they move on and hopefully can just keep on getting as many, all these games in as they can. As I'm saying it, I'm not believing it at the same time, but something in me thinks it's possible because it looked like it. They were shooting right at Holfi the whole time. Tell me in the comment section if you think this sort of kind of thing could happen. I don't know. I have a funny feeling about it. Holfi is in that. Holfi. You know the Holfi that can't stop pucks for, like, come on. How the heck? I don't know. Bookies are happy. But the reason why I broke even is because I had the Leafs over 0.5 in the first period for for bigger a bigger bigger pearls than or the same pearls as the uh, puck line. So and then a small on the under. So whatever. Broke kind of even. I'm down for the day and looked like a great day that turned out not to be. Okay, do when that happens. All right, tomorrow, uh, come every, join me tomorrow. We'll all do this all over again. Also, if you want to talk about this on my show, I do a show from three to five. Perlo's the N Pearl the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, three to five Eastern, five days a week. Also, I do these picks five days a week. You wouldn't have got the picks that I did. Uh, yesterday because I didn't do them on video only if you're a patron member which again I'll put in the description and you can join and you can get all those picks too tell me in the uh, comment section what do you think about what I said about that Vancouver Leafs game if I'm just nuts or whatever uh, and have a great day everybody lots of love to you okay bye